In this Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to bake displacement maps. And for demonstration in this tutorial, I'm going to be using my procedural sci-fi metal. So if you'd like to check out that tutorial, I will have the link to that tutorial in the description. So when I created this tutorial, I used the displacements in the node editor, and I used this procedural texture here to make this sci-fi metal. And using the displacements, the metal actually pops out of the mesh. But the downside to this is that the displacement in the node editor doesn't work in Blender Eevee, it only works in the Cycles render engine. But what you can do is you can bake the displacement texture, and then when you bake it, you can add the displacement modifier and actually displace the mesh, so actually displace the geometry, and then you'll be able to use the displacement in Blender Eevee. And the actual geometry is going to be displaced, so you could upload the model to Sketchfab or use it in a game engine or another 3D software. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. And if you'd like to follow along with the exact same file that I'm using, then you can purchase this procedural sci-fi metal with the link in the description on my Gumroad store and my Patreon page, or you can also do the tutorial on how to create the sci-fi metal, links in the description if you'd like to check that out, or if you have some other displacement map that you want to bake, you can just use that and follow along with the tutorial. Now just one more thing before we start, videos like these are made possible thanks to my Gumroad customers and my Patreon supporters and my members on the YouTube memberships. So if you like to help support me and this channel, then I will have links in the video description to my Gumroad store and Patreon page and the YouTube memberships. And if you join the YouTube memberships, you'll be helping to support the channel each month and you'll get some cool perks here on YouTube. And if you check out my Gumroad store and Patreon page on my Gumroad and Patreon, you can get tutorial files, you can also get 3D models and assets, and procedural materials and other Blender content. And you'll be helping to support me and this channel so I can continue to make tutorials. All right, so here is the finished tutorial files of the sci-fi metal. So what I'm going to do first real quick is just select this plane here and I will delete it. And I'm also going to select the camera and delete it. And I'm just going to focus on this object because this object is what I'm going to be baking the texture for. And then I'm also going to hit Alt R to clear any rotation values just to rotate the cube back. All right, now as I said before, this object is being displaced using this displacement right here in the node editor, and it's being displaced using this texture. Now to preview this texture, I'm going to be using the node wrangler add-on. So if you don't have the node wrangler add-on enabled, you can just click right here on edit, and then you can open up the preferences, and then just click over on the add-ons tab, and you can go to the search there and just search for the node wrangler add-on, and then just check mark the node wrangler add-on, and then I'll show you how to use it right now. All right, so once you have the node wrangler add-on, on enabled, you can hold down the control and shift key and then you can select different nodes. So when you hold down the control and shift key and select different nodes, that is going to preview the node. You can see what it's going to do is add this viewer node right here and then it's going to plug the viewer into whatever node you select and then you'll actually be able to preview what that node looks like on the object. So I'm just going to control shift and select this color ramp right here and you can see this is the displacement texture. So it's using this black and white data to tell it how how much the mesh is going to be bumped out. And so this is the texture that we want to texture bake. So to start off, let's go over here to the render properties. And when you are baking textures, the render engine needs to be set to cycles. Eevee doesn't support baking. So if you are in Eevee, just make sure you switch to cycles. After you're done with the baking, you can switch back to Eevee if you want to, but just make sure you're in cycles for now for the baking. And then also I'm going to open up the sampling. And if you have more render samples, then it's going to take longer to bake. So it kind of uses the sampling to bake the textures, but I found that you really don't need that many samples. It really doesn't affect the quality. So I'm just going to turn these samples here, the render samples, just to like a 10, and that way it'll bake much faster, but the quality will look the same. All right, so then if you are in the Cycles Render Engine, you're going to see this baking tab right here. So I'm just going to open this up, and we have some different bake settings. So right here, you can see that there is a bake type. Now, if you click on this, it's going to show you different things that you can bake. But if you look closely, you can see that there actually isn't any displacement. There's like the roughness one, there's the normal, but there isn't actually any displacement. And so what I'm going to use instead, instead of using a displacement, because there isn't one, I'm going to instead use the emission. So the EMIT, that's short for emission. So I'm going to bake the emission values. Now, you might be wondering how we're going to do this, but on this viewer node, if you click on this and open it up, you can see this viewer node is actually an emission. So when you control shift and select different nodes, it basically acts just 
like an emission because you can see there's even like a strength value and you can turn that up but if you want to see what the actual texture looks like just leave it set to one so this viewer node is basically acting like an emission so if you haven't already just make sure you control shift and then select the color ramp and that is how we're going to bake the emission value and that way it'll bake this texture now before you hit the bake button there's a few more things that we need to do we need to create some sort of image to bake to and then we also need to UV unwrap the object so that the texture knows where it's going to be placed on the new image so what I'm going to do is click right here and I'm going to drag down and this is going to split the window so then I want to click right here on the editor type and I want to change this to UV editor so that we can edit the UVs so now what I want to do is press tab right here in the 3d space and that's going to go into edit mode all right so now what we need to do is we need to create an image to bake to so I'm going to press shift a right here in the shader editor and I'm going to go to the search here and I'm going to search for an image texture so let's just click on the image texture and I can drop it down here so now we need to click on new to create a new image texture so I'm going to click on new and I can just rename this like displacement now on the width and height here I want to use a 4k texture so what I'm going to do is click and then drag down and then let go and that way we can change both of the values at the same time and I'm going to hit the backspace and then for a 4k texture I'm going to type in 4096 so that is pretty standard for a 4k texture I'll just click right here and then that'll confirm it so you can set this to whatever you want I'm going to be using a 4k texture because I do want it to be pretty high quality and then we're going to be baking over the color so it doesn't really matter I'm just going to leave it to black and then you can click on ok now there is one really important thing you do here before you actually bake it the color space right here you need to click on this and you need to set it to non color now why we're doing this is because this is a displacement map so it's not actually contributing to the base color this right here this is the base color because this color ramp is going into the base color on the principle but this displacement map it's only going to be going into the displacement and so it's not actually contributing to the base color and so because of that we want to set this to non-color and it is important that you set this to non-color before you actually bake the texture all right so there's just one more thing that we need to do we need to actually uv unwrap this object onto this new texture that we created. And this is why I brought up the UV editor. So right here in the UV editor, I'm just gonna click right here, and I want to go to our new texture that we made with the dis which is called displacement. So this displacement texture that we made right here, it is now right here. So now I want to UV unwrap this object. So you may need to UV unwrap your object differently depending on what it is. For this object, I'm just going to press U with my mouse hovered over the 3D space, and then I'm just gonna use the smart UV project and then on the island margin right here I'm just going to go with like a 0 0.01 just a 0 0.01 and that way there will be a little bit of space be between the islands and then I'm just going to click on OK all right so now if you zoom in here you can see there's a little bit of space between the islands and it's just done a basic UV editing so just make sure you set up a decent UV unwrap for your object all right so we are almost ready to bake now I'm going to press tab to go back into object mode and I need to make sure this is selected so just make sure this object is selected and then also make sure this displacement map is selected you know it's selected if it has that white outline around it and because you're selecting it that is telling blender that it's going to bake to that texture all right so then I always like to just press Control s again to save my blender file make sure that the bake type here is set to the emission so the emit and also make sure that you Control shift and select it on this color ramp right here so that it can actually bake the emission all right so now you're just going to hit the bake button and it's not going to take my computer very long it should be done very quickly it might take your computer longer if it's not as powerful all right so it is now finished you can zoom in here and you can see that now this texture is right here now one really really important thing you need to make sure you save this image because if you don't save this image to your computer then blender's not going to save it and so you're going to lose that information so to save this image you can click right up here on image and then you can just click on save as and when you do that blender's file browser will appear here, and I'm just going to save this as displacement and just to make the file size a little bit smaller I'm going to use JPEG I'll just use a JPEG so it's going to be displacement.jpg and then
and then I will click on save as. So now we've saved this to an external file on our computer. All right, so now you can just plug this back up however you want. So what you can do is you can just drag this displacement right down here. And instead of using this texture right here, um, this Voronoi texture, this is a procedural texture. If you don't want to use a procedural texture, you could instead just take this displacement and you could put the color into the height value right there. And there we go. So now instead of using the procedural texture, we are now using this displacement here. And you can see right down here, it is actually displacing the mesh. So then if you wanted to, you could just delete the procedural textures and use this displacement instead. But this method is still using the displacements in the node editor, and we are still using cycles. So now I'm going to show you how to set this up with the displacement modifier. So it actually displaces the geometry. And then if you want to, you can apply that modifier, or you can just keep the modifier there and you can switch to Blender Eevee and use that instead. So let's click right up here on cycles and we're going to change this now to Eevee. Now when you change it to Eevee you can see the displacement isn't working. So I'm just going to unplug the displacement, just unplug it from there and then I can just click on the displacement and press X to delete it. I can also just click on this right here and press X to delete it. And then also I'm just going to control shift and select the principled BSDF to preview the final material. So there is the final material but it doesn't have the displacement. So to set up the displacement for EV, I'm just going to click right over here to the modifier properties. And you can see this already has a subdivision surface. And why I added the subdivision surface is so that the displacement actually had a lot of data to work with. So by using the subdivision surface, it's making the object higher topology so that there is more topology to actually move around with the displacement. So I want this to be a very high quality displacement. I want it to look very high quality. So right here on the subdivision surface modifier, I'm going to turn these all the way up the viewport and the render up to like four and if you don't have a subdivision surface modifier you can just click on add modifier and you can add the subdivision surface so now you can see this object is very smooth and if I press tab to go into edit mode on this object you can see it already is somewhat subdivided but I want to use the subdivision surface to subdivide it even more and also one thing I did want to mention the subdivision surface will actually change the shape of the mesh it'll kind of smooth it out so what you could do if you don't want that smoothing there on the sides is you could change it to simple instead of the Catmull Clark and that way it's still going to keep its own shape it's going to keep the shape but it will be more subdivided I actually like that round edge for an object like this I like that round edge so I'm going to change this back to Catmull Clark but you could use simple if you want to all right so we now need to add the displacement modifier to actually displace the mesh so we're going to click on add modifier and then we're going to go right down here under deform and add the displace modifier all right so you can see it doesn't really do anything other than just make it look really thick and so we need to add a new texture right here in the displacement so I'm going to click on new to add a new texture and then we want to load in this texture so to do this I'm going to click right over here on these buttons and this is going to take me over to the texturing tab which is right down here now you could add in like some sort of procedural texture but I don't want to do that I want this to be set to image or movie so we can add in the image that we actually baked now you could click on the open button and open up the texture so just click on the open button and it's going to take you to the file browser and you can just select this texture wherever you saved it but you can see that this has already been loaded inside the blend file so instead of clicking on open I can just click right here on the drop down and you can see there is the displacement so I'm just going to add in the displacement all right now you can see it's doing something but it's really messed up it's not actually positioned correctly on the object and it's also way too strong so we need to go back over here so click back over here on the modifier properties and we need to change some of the settings so you can see that it's not actually placed correctly on the mesh and that is because on the coordinates here right now we are just using the local coordinates but instead I want to use the UV because the UV is how we UV unwrapped this texture onto the object so on the coordinates here we want to choose UV and now you can see that is looking much better and that is actually looking really cool now it is way too strong though it's like super super strong so I found that a strength value of just like 0.1 works much better but you can really just play around with the strength value and get it to whatever strength you want. I am just going to go with 0.1. Now there is one more setting you could change. You could change the mid-level. So it's kind of just going to depend on your object. But I find that for this object, I like turning the mid-level all the way to zero. That just looks a little bit better. It's a little bit more round and I do like that better. 
and then I can hold down the Z button and go up into the rendered view and you can see we are now in Blender Eevee but we are using that displacement texture. So it is actually displacing the mesh and that is super cool. Now if you press the tab key to go into edit mode you can see that the actual geometry still isn't really displaced. It's not actually stuck in that position because this is still just a modifier. So you could keep this how it is if you want to but what you could do if you want this to be actual geometry is you could just apply the modifiers. So this is pretty high quality. Um, setting it to 4 is pretty high detail. So if you wanted to, you could just like turn the levels viewport and render down to like 3 or something. But you can see that's a little bit low quality. So I'm actually going to set it back up to 4 on the viewport and the render. So now you could just click on the drop down and you can just click on apply to apply both of the modifiers. Uh, make sure you apply the subsurf first and then also click right here on the drop down and you can click on apply. So now if you press tab to go into edit mode, you can see that this is actual geometry. So that is really cool. So we have now turned our procedural displacement into actual geometry. Now one problem with this is that it is super high quality. This is a very, very, very dense mesh. And so this isn't going to work in like a game engine or something like that. And it is just harder to work with because it is so dense. So there are a few things you could do to fix this. One thing that you could do is you could manually retopologize the mesh. You could also use some sort of program that will retopologize it for you, or there are also some Blender add-ons which will do retopology for you. But there is also a quick and dirty method that I'm going to show you real quick on how to lower the topology. So what you can do is just select this object, and we are going to click on Add Modifier, and then right down here under Generate, you can add the Decimate Modifier. So what the Decimate Modifier does is it will remove more and more of the geometry, but it will do the best job it can to keep the object shape. So right here on the ratio, you can turn this down and it's going to remove the topology. So I'm going to turn this down to like a 0.3. So that's going to remove a lot of the topology and you can see it is taking a little while to load up, but you can see now it's removed a lot of the topology. If you zoom in here, you can see there is just like a little bit of stretching here and there. So if you don't like that, you could turn the ratio back up, but that has now removed a lot of the topology. So then right here on the decimate modifier, you could just click right here on the drop down and then just click on apply. And then again, Again, it might just take a moment to apply and it just finished so now that that is applied you can tab to go into edit mode and you can see that is much more manageable now the topology is terrible that's really not the best topology because everything is in triangles but that is a quick and dirty method to just lower the topology and as you can see the object looks pretty much the same so i hope you found this tutorial helpful and thank you so much for watching and again if you'd like to watch the tutorial on how to create this sci-fi metal i will have the link in the video description and you you can also purchase the project files for this sci-fi metal on my Gumroad store, and you also get access to all of my procedural materials if you join my Patreon page. And checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page are really great ways to help support me and this channel. And if you'd like to help support the channel monthly here on YouTube, you can also check out the YouTube memberships. So if you click on that join button down there next to the subscribe button, if you join my memberships, then you'll get some cool perks here on YouTube and you'll be helping to support me each month. So I do really appreciate your support, but I hope this video was helpful and thank you for watching.